everyone, this is Gail, and today I am going to be doing a um, technique that I've been asked to show before, and I just never did get around to it, whatever around to it is, and I thought I would tr do that today. Now what I'm doing, and you can use any clay, you don't have to use scrap, but I'm using scrap clay. And I'm not going to use this. Let me put this out of the way. I've got some blue, some green, some pink, some white, some black, and then a darker green. And I just wanted to pick some colors that I thought would go together. If you remember these two colors, these were the ones that I had mixed with some ecru or mud so that they would match. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll these. Some of these I'll need to put through the pasta machine. Some I'll just roll into logs. Eventually they'll all go into logs. But like this one needs to be blended a little bit. So just bits and pieces of canes and sheets and things that I've trimmed. And these are my pinks and purples. So anyway, let me get these combined and then I'll be back. Okay, I have... Uh, rolled all these out into a snake. I've got my green and my blue and my dark green and my white. Now the pink I decided not to blend. I just gathered it all up and rolled it into a snake. And I did the same thing with the black. See there's some gold and a little bit of red, but I just thought it would add some interest. So now what I need to do is arrange these in a way that you don't have too many dark colors together. How does that look? And some of these are a little long, so let me put it back in my scrap pile. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to gather these up together. Put a white down here next to the black and a green in the middle. And I'm going to try to press this down to where it's two rows of three just be, so I can make sure I get the air out of it. See, this down here feels nice and firm. This up here still feels like it's got air. So let's see what's going on here. And I'm just going to press these together in no particular order, just so they're kind of stuck together. Then I'm going to start rolling or twisting just one side. Or maybe I'll roll it first into one big round snake and then start twisting. Now, like I said, you don't have to use scrap clay. You can use any clay that you have if you want to control your colors then add whatever colors you want in here but what we're going to what we're going for is a striped piece of clay and you're wondering how in the world is this going to become a stripe well <coughs> it will so i'm just going to roll it a little bit and then i'm going to go back and i'm going to twist some more and I'm going to twist until these stripes are thin. And I'm just pressing in because I don't want this to get too long. And this is just to kind of roll it together again. Then I'm going to twist again. And you twist by taking, holding one side still and rolling the other side. 
And I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing so that each end gets twisted. And the reason I roll like this is to keep it warm. Because once it, you know, I've, all, I've told you before, my craft room is not a very warm room in the wintertime. And even though the calendar says spring, it is still wintertime here in Virginia. We had snow last, this past weekend. It's still in the 30s in the morning. It's just, I am so ready for spring. Let me push this together a little bit. Just, like I said, keep it from getting too long. And then warm it up a little bit more. And I think I'm going to twist one more time. Now you can see where the stripes are beginning to form. And it's up to you how thick you want your stripes or how thin you want your stripes. But what we're going to do is a drag technique. It's one of the problems I have when I start talking to you is I don't tell you what we're going to be doing. We just start doing it. I need to start telling you this is going to be a drag technique. I think this right here needs to be twisted a whoops I almost I twisted it in half which might be a good thing but I can get it back together and just roll it make sure it's stuck and I would really prefer smaller stripes but because my clay is not real warm or my room is not real warm I think I will stop here now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my roller and I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit. Then I'm going to put my roller down in the middle and try to go this way. And I just realized I'm going to have to cut this in half because it won't go through my pasta machine. So I'll have a blue stripe piece and a pink stripe sheet. So I'll just do this. But what you want to do is to get these stripes to lengthen enough to where you can flatten it out and it will go through your pasta machine. Now you don't want to roll this way because then you'll get rid of your stripes. You always want to go this way. See how I'm ending up with these stripes. And I'll cut this end off since it's not really striped very well. Then I'll put this through the pasta machine. And I'll go through this way so that my stripes are up and down. And I think I'll go to the number two, which is seven cards. Then I'll go to a number three, which is five cards. And there we have a striped sheet. Now I also have a sheet of scrap clay. And this scrap clay is going to be the base. I'm going to lay this on here and because I'll tell you what, let me just clean up this edge right here.
And I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it this way. Or do I want to go this way? No, it's not quite long enough. I'll go this way and I'm going to cut it. Because what I'm thinking about doing is making a bracelet out of this when I'm finished. I guess I need to clean up this end too. Just to get the rough edges off. Now you don't need to start this big. It might have been easier for me to start with a smaller piece for you anyway. But since I decided to make this into a bracelet, I thought I would just start here. <coughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a needle tool, and I think my needle tool is in here. This is not a pointed needle. This is a tapestry needle that has a little bit of a blunt end. It's not real sharp like your needle tool is sharp like a needle. This is rounded on the end. And what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to lay the ruler where I'm scraping, but I'm going to use the ruler just as a guideline because I don't want anything to stop the drag on my clay. And I'm just going to take this and go straight through. Now that I've got one line, even though it was crooked, I'm going to come over about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to do this every quarter of an inch all the way down. Doesn't take a lot of talent. Now I'm going to cut this part off. Because my scrap clay runs out over here on this end. Alright, so now I've done that. Now what I need to do now is flip this tile around. It's going to put it farther away from me, but I'm doing this because that's just the way my brain works. It's from left to right. And now I've got these that I pulled this way. Now I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to go through and drag the other way, halfway in between each one. Of these lines. So I went one direction every quarter of an inch. Now I'm going in between. Oops, I kind of got offline there, but that's all right. It'll add some interest. And this is going to give you more of a feathered look. Now you might have liked the look of the first one. Well, this one was totally out of whack. But this, I like this because you've got your pull going in two different directions. I just need to slow down, don't I? Works much better when I just take my time. And there we go. Let me lift this up.
It almost looks like a piece of fabric, doesn't it? And see, here is where I pulled this way. And here is where I pulled that way. So I think that is just a gorgeous piece of clay. And this, this was scrap that came out of my scrap bowls. You saw it on my table. So now what I think I'll do, because it's already got... Excuse me, I'm getting my forms out of here. Because it's already got a base of scrap, I'm going to go ahead, excuse me, go ahead and put this on my bracelet. And this is a form that I got, oh goodness, let me see where my bad end is. This is my bad end. I got this um, many years ago when I was <coughs> going to Donna Cato workshops. She used these brass forms, and I'm not even sure where I got them. But I like this one because it's got a little bit of a curve to it. I don't know if you can tell that or not. See how it's not perfectly straight. It's got a little bit of a curve. But I really like this. And then I'll just trim it off. Even with the edge of the form. trim the ends. It's easier to get the sides if the ends are trimmed. And just use your, your form as your guide. And you can use any bracelet form you have. I just like this one because it's nice and wide. Now what I will do <coughs> is I'm going to pull these edges down so that the scrap clay doesn't show. On the sides. So just pull your color down. It'll kind of give it a rounded look. And then after I do this, I'm going to bake it. Then I will come back and put an inside layer on it. And you'll have to trim this again, but this way you're covering up the, the brown or whatever you use for your base. Now if you are not using scrap clay and you want to use the base in the same color or even even if you do use scrap clay if you want to use the base the same color as what you plan on putting on the inside you can but I wasn't gonna I'm, I'm, I think I'll use either the blue or the green to put on the inside Make, don't forget your ends.
Okay, so there, I went ahead and fast-forwarded through some of that so you wouldn't have to watch it for long. And then just take your blade, and I'm going to take my shorter blade, after I clean it off. And just tidy up your edges from where you press the clay down. Sorry for the silence. You know, I just start looking and thinking and this is also a good time for you to see if there's any place that you want to fix. Since this has grooves in it, I'm not going to worry about that because there shouldn't be any fingerprints on that because I didn't really touch a whole lot of it. So I'm going to bake this, and I'm going to bake it for an hour. You know me, I always bake my things for an hour. And then I'll be back. Okay, my bracelet is baked. And I'm going to just kind of bend this brass a little bit to kind of get the clay loose. And just pop it off of this form. So I'm done with this. So what I thought I would do, since I had uh, this color, I had a lot of this color left over, I'm going to um, put some texture in it. I think I'm going to go with this. What I'm going to do is sprinkle just a little bit of water and just coat it so that I don't have to worry about this sticking. And actually, I think I'm going to use another one. I think I'm going to use this one with the leaves. I'm an organic kind of person. So I'm going to take this and lay it on my clay sheet. And this is my clay is rolled out to a number three, which is five playing cards. For those of you that don't have a pasta machine and you want to know how thick this is. And then I'm going to move this down. To maybe right there. And just I'm just doing this so I can have texture on the entire piece of clay. And it would have made it a lot easier if I had put it on a piece of paper to begin with, but of course I didn't. So I'm going to have to get it up without tearing it. So I'm just going to use my potter's rib. And I'm going to take some poly paste. You can use a lot of different things. You can use bacon bond, you can use liquid clay, but I prefer for stuff like this to bond baked and unbaked clay together. I prefer the poly paste because you can see it goes on pasty. It's not a liquid. It's like liquid clay except it's just a little bit pastier, but it will form a very nice bond. between the raw clay and the baked clay. 
if you don't do that, if you don't put something to bond the raw clay to the baked clay, they will not stick. The one thing I like about the uh, poly paste is that it doesn't dry out. It's like liquid clay. It doesn't ever dry. I'm just going to blot off the water from here. And I'm going to lay this on the inside of my bracelet. And just press it lightly because you don't want to You don't want to get rid of the texture that you just put in. And I will cut here. And I'll cut here. Now for those of you that like to put... Um, like to put beads or a clasp in your bracelet, now would be the time to do that before you bake this. But I don't think I'm going to do that on this one. I think I'm just going to trim it. Sorry if I went out of frame. I wasn't looking at the camera. Now that I have a good edge here, I will trim this off. Let me cut this tag off while I'm able to. Can't seem to get my there. Couldn't seem to get my blade to move. And just trim around the corners. You don't have to get it real smooth, but don't get as much of the excess off as you can. And the rest you can smooth with your fingers. So just like I did on the inside, I mean on the outside, I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of press these edges. And it will also cover up any of the brown that might be showing. And turn it around and do the same going in the other direction. And now you've got a really nice finish to the inside of your bracelet. And just, again, remove any little excess pieces of clay that you might have. It's just a little bit of a bubble, not a bubble, but a little ball of clay right there that doesn't need to be there. Just look it over. There's a place here that needed to be trimmed. I think that looks pretty good. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I will bake this again. Um, actually, this is pretty thin. So I think I'll only bake this for 30 minutes. That should be fine. The thickest part was the bracelet, and that's done. But even when it's baked, you're going to find that it's flexible, and you can put it on your wrist. So I will be back after this is baked. Alright, my bracelet is all done. 
And because I smoothed the edges with my thumbs, there's not much roughness. There's one little rough place there, but not enough that I feel like I need to sand it. You can see the inside. It's got texture to it and it fits on my wrist you know so there you go and what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and coat this with some resin and this is uh, tinypandora.com I'm not sure which one of these is open I think this is the open one and um, I'm going to pour a little bit of this resin into a cup. You don't need much. And I'm going to use the brush. Just brushing this off of the glass. And I do keep this inside the box that it came in because it's a nice sturdy box and it kind of filters it from the sunshine and I'm going to just put a thin layer of this resin on my bracelet I don't think I'll put it on the inside just because I like the feel of natural clay I'm going to just brush this on here This is awesome stuff. Now I'm not putting a real thick coat because all I want is a little bit of shine. I don't want it to fill in any grooves or anything. So I'm just making sure that it's covered. Let me put my hands inside here to get this end piece. I think I got all of it. I'm going to put it on my aluminum sheet, aluminum foil sheet. I'll put that inside. And I did make some little earrings or things to make into earrings. I haven't made the earrings yet. But I think I'm going to coat those while I have the resin out and have it on my brush okay now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my UV under my UV light and it shouldn't take long But in the meantime, I'm going to clean up some of my mess. Oh, there's a little bit of resin left. I would put it on something, but I don't really have anything to put it on. So I'm going to put it back in the bottle and hope I don't mess it up. Because this to me is like liquid gold. And just put the top on and again keep it out of the sunlight. <coughs> and then you store your brush inside some aluminum foil so that the sunlight doesn't get to your brush and when the foil gets a little bit too used all you gotta do is throw it away and get you another piece it's that simple let me put this back, I put this in the box too
All right, it should take about maybe 10 minutes. So I'm going to turn the camera off and just clean up a little bit, and then I'll be back. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to work, I was trying to smooth things out, you know, clean things up while I was waiting, and I did, and it's only been like two minutes. I still need to give this a few more minutes. I decided I would go ahead and try to smooth out the other half just to show you the difference in the different colors. Here was the other stripe that had most of the blue in it. And here this has more of the purples and pinks. So this will give you an entirely different look. And I do believe I put the other half of my scrap sheet in here. I always keep every you know when my scrap pile gets too full I go ahead and make sheets of scrap clay. This one turned into a really nice brown. I've got some that are more gray. And it really helps to have some of this on hand. So that's another thing you can do with your scrap. Before I get started, let me go ahead and trim my edges. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it looks like a piece of fabric. I just love this technique. So I'll do something with that, too. But anyway, now my bracelet should be done. It doesn't take long. Except the bottom side isn't done. So I'm just going to turn it over, but let me show you everything except this edge is done, but look how shiny that is. It's just like glass. It's got a nice, hard, permanent shine on it. I'm just going to turn it over so the other side can get the light, but that's it. So next time you find yourself with an abundance of scrap clay, this is a good way to get rid of it and to create some things. Now, I do keep a drawer. It's a little plastic cabinet that I have, and I keep that cabinet full of... Um, that's where I keep my scrap sheets. If I have any sheets that have... Um, what am I trying to think of? texture on it. Like I'd, I've got a crackle sheet. There's some black clay in there that's got a crackle to it. I keep everything in that drawer. And then when I'm ready to do something, I've got it there. And this will probably just go back into my scrap drawer or bowls. But it's awfully pretty. Maybe I'll think of something else. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to put these beads together and make some earrings. Yeah, just made little things like this and I'll just make some drop earrings out of those. So I hope you like this project. I know I did. I had a lot of fun with the um, with the dragging method. I might just drag these just because I can. So come back again next Monday for another polymer clay video. And don't forget, Friday Frolics on Fridays. So everyone have a great weekend, a great week. Have a... Bye-bye.